The Tao Te Ching is a classic of ancient Chinese literature. It is a guide for creating harmony in yourself and the world around you by describing a fundamental force called the Tao that operates uniformly throughout the universe and is the cause of everything that happens. The Tao can be understood as the laws of nature, or all the laws of physics if you prefer. The Tao Te Ching shows you how to develop personal power through living in alignment with the Tao, otherwise known as going with the flow, being in harmony with nature. Central Idea a central idea in the Tao Te Ching is the importance of avoiding extremes and keeping to the middle path of moderation on your journey through life. Find the middle ground between the extremes in any situation thus avoiding counter-reactions. The result is neutrality and stability. Harmony with the Tao means living so that the events of our life do not swing back and forth like a pendulum. Such disturbances only get in the way of calm inner reflection. And yet there are many in the world who love this drama and would not be without it. The Tao Te Ching encourages us to sense the world around us directly, to contemplate our impressions deeply from a position of neutrality. It advises against relying on the structures of orthodox belief systems that have been created by others. Such ideologies remove us from a direct experience of life in the now, and effectively cut us off from our intuition. Finding and following the middle path requires you to develop an awareness of the physical forces that shape your world and direct its events. Such forces operate uniformly at all levels, from the macrocosm to the microcosm. They operate in the universe as a whole, and in the minds and lives of individuals. Understanding these natural laws gives you the power to influence events in the world without resorting to force. That is the way of the Tao. Subtle influence is better than force. The Tao Te Ching suggests using subtle influence, not force, to achieve your goals. The objective is to avoid taking action that elicits strong counter-reactions that are a distraction and which must be dealt with. In nature, we see that excessive force in one direction triggers the growth of a neutralizing force. This has the effect of returning the system to a stable state. This principle is seen in human affairs too. It is clear that force cannot be the basis for establishing a sustainable social environment. Accepting the inevitability of change. When you come to know the Tao, you understand that everything in the universe is in a state of dynamic change. Nothing, absolutely nothing that exists in the physical universe is permanent. Everything passes into non-existence when its time comes. When you know this, you become less attached to the transitory things of this world. You can still enjoy and value these while they last, but when they leave you, your suffering will be lessened. The forces of change are largely beyond your control. It is not easy to accept the inevitability of change, but it can be done. We should not waste our energies propping up what one day must inevitably decline. Grasping the reality of impermanence allows us to align ourselves with the forces of nature that bring about gradual change in the social and physical world. We learn to embrace change and not mind when it happens. Becoming a force of nature. Our alignment with the forces in nature makes us an integral part of the evolving world. It confers the momentum of those larger forces. You are a swimmer going with the current in the great river of life. Our perceptions become more finely tuned because they are based on the evolving reality of the present moment. We see the world as it is, not as we want it to be or believe it should be about Lao Tzu. The Tao Te Ching is said to have been written by Lao Tzu, the custodian of the imperial archives during the reign of the Shu dynasty, though some researchers believe that Lao Tzu, which translates as the honorific term Old Master is actually a composite of several people. The practice of attributing authorship to a composite writing team with a single name is not unheard of in the world of literary classics. The works attributed to William Shakespeare, for example, are thought by some scholars to be the combined work of several people, including his fellow actors in the troupe, and one Sir Henry Neville, a courtier and relative of Shakespeare. A handbook for people of influence. Whether Lao Tzu was one man or several, the Tao Te Ching is clearly a response to a time of political unrest. China in that period had been comprised of a multitude of warring states coming into frequent conflict. Aggression was met with escalating aggression until it seemed the Middle Kingdom would be annihilated altogether. The Tao Te Ching was written to educate people of influence in the ways of peace and harmony. 
The Tao Te Ching is the result Lao Tzu's careful observations of the unfolding patterns of nature. From these observations he deduced a set of underlying principles that cause the world to behave in the way it does. These principles are abstract in the same way that a mathematical formula is abstract. For example the mathematical formula pi r squared is helpful for calculating the area of a circle, any circle at any scale from an atom up to a spiral galaxy. Knowledge of these principles is helpful for a person seeking to establish harmony and balance in their life. The Interconnectedness of All Things Lao Tzu discerned not only the dynamically changing nature of the world, he also perceived that the 10,000 things are interconnected to make one large diverse system held together and informed by a single unifying force, the Tao. The abstraction of the Tao is difficult to express in purely logical terms, so the author resorted to paradox in much the same way as Zen cons do. This induces an intuitive understanding that complements logical awareness. Polarity and the Big Bang an important principle in this unifying field of forces is polarity. Lao Tzu's understanding of how the universe began matches closely what we today would recognize as the Big Bang. Before the Bang, there was the Supreme Absolute which had limitless undifferentiated potential but no physical existence. Then, in the instant of the Bang the Supreme Absolute divided itself from non-existence in an event that created space and time and which is characterized by cause and effect, action and reaction. This physical universe is founded upon two charged states, yin, negative, and yang, positive. Due to the complementary polarity of matter and energy, these constantly separate and regroup to create the changing, evolving physical reality that is the universe we know. Being proactive not reactive. The wise among us look for the seeds of change, those triggers that point to what is likely to happen. It helps to know that everything in the phenomenal world, must transform into its own opposite in time. Birth to death, day to night, weak to strong, happy to sad. This is the movement of polarity in its countless manifestations. This can give you insight into worldly affairs. You can use this knowledge to position yourself well for when the future arrives rather than wait until it arrives and then take action. When we look at European history from the year 1000 to 2000, we see a pattern of aggregation. Beginning with a patchwork of small states in the 11th century there has emerged a unified Europe a thousand years later in the 21st century. During that time there have been recurring cycles of war and peace, medieval ignorance and enlightenment, plague and prosperity. We see that the smaller states have combined to form larger and larger states. For example the unification of the German states under Bismarck in the 19th century and again in 1990 with the reunification of East and West Germany into a single federated state. This movement of the Tao has evolved Europe into a single economic entity in the form of the European Union. In the 21st century this unification process is extending East and South to the Islamic world and the shores of Africa, areas not previously thought of as European. Given this trend towards unification, it might reasonably be predicted that the European Union will continue to incorporate non-EU states until it becomes necessary to change the name European or at least redefine what Europe means. Meanwhile the always independently minded Britain from their position as an offshore island has opted to exit from the Union, while attempting to maintain friendly trade relations. Another example is the rise and fall of political and commercial empires. History has many examples of empires that began modestly, rose to great power, then declined when their power spent itself. The Roman, the Ottoman and the British empires are examples of political empires backed up by military force. The Dutch East India Company and the British East India Company are early examples of powerful trading empires that have since passed into history. If we understand how the Tao influences patterns of behavior at both the individual and collective levels, we are well positioned to influence the course of events. We are able to extrapolate patterns into the future and guide our actions in the present as a way of engineering our future. Our purpose in life is to help the Absolute experience itself. Lao Tzu reasoned that if the Absolute wanted to experience itself at the physical level by creating a universe in which multitudes of life forms can have experiences, then our purpose as points of conscious presence in that universe might simply be to help the Absolute experience itself by investigating, observing, and emulating nature. 
Taoists therefore work to become aware of and understand the laws of nature with a view to harmonizing with them, particularly as they manifest in human society. The enlightened person cultivates their understanding of the Tao and lives in harmony with nature. They create the right conditions within themselves and in their environment for enlightenment to spontaneously occur. Albert Einstein and the Tao Te Ching Einstein is surely one of the most influential thinkers of the modern era. His paradigm-shifting ideas changed the face of physics and the course of history in the nuclear age, ideas that still resonate powerfully a century later. While Einstein did not identify as a Taoist, his work manifests many of the ideas contained in the Tao Te Ching. Einstein expresses them in strikingly similar terms. Thus there are parallels with the work of Lao Tzu, both of whom had a consuming passion to understand the laws of nature, the laws of physics, and to know what invisible but all-powerful informing principles make the universe behave as it does. As Einstein wrote, The most beautiful and deepest experience a man can have is the sense of the mysterious. It is the underlying principle of religion as well as of all serious endeavors in art and science. He who never had this experience seems to me, if not dead, then at least blind. To sense that behind anything that can be experienced there is a something that our minds cannot grasp, whose beauty and sublimity reaches us only indirectly, this is religiousness. In this sense I am religious. To me it suffices to wonder at these secrets and to attempt humbly to grasp with my mind a mere image of the lofty structure of all there is.